So first we're going to learn how to make Hokkaido bread, a big loaf that slices very nicely with a great texture. So the first thing we can do is sift out the dry ingredients, three and one quarter cups of bread flour into our mixing bowl. And it's easy to knead this by machine. So we're using a stand mixer fitted with a dough hook, a tablespoon of sugar. That helps a lot adding that little tiny bit of sweet and one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. So you can just mix this with your whisk and into this will go the wet ingredients. So this will go in right on the mixer. How do you think you could substitute the bread flour for all-purpose flour? This works so well with the bread flour, which has a stronger protein than the all-purpose flour. Uh, you might not get as high a loaf of bread uh, using the other. Now we have to proof one and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast in one quarter cup of warm water and use water that's no warmer than 115 degrees with one and a half teaspoons of sugar. The sugar helps the yeast proof. And do you know why we add yeast to bread and what it does to the dough itself? It's a leavener. It actually acts on the starch and the sugar of the flour to create carbon dioxide and alcohol, which is bubbly. And that's what makes the dough rise. And we have a cup of warm milk, again, no warmer than 110 degrees, and one large egg, which we can mix right into the milk. Four tablespoons of room temperature butter. We're gonna add that last like you would in a brioche. A couple weekends ago, I used the same bread for a grilled cheese sandwich. It's so delicious. My grandchildren ate the bread and not the cheese. They just <laughs> nibbled all the bread. They liked it so much. Okay, so into this, we will add our milk and egg and our yeast mixture. That dough hook is taking all the dry ingredients slowly and incorporating them into the wet ingredients. So it's been about 10 minutes. Add your four tablespoons of butter on low add a piece at a time. And if you've made brioche, you know that this makes the dough so utterly delicious. Have a buttered bowl ready. So we're gonna put that dough right in here. Okay, we can take this out, put this dough right on a floured surface. Knead it just a few times so that you get a nice round ball, which will go into your buttered bowl. How long do you let this proof now? Oh, it's gonna prove for anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour or so. So notice I'm using a scraper in one hand and my uh, kneading hand is touching the dough. That way you have a nice clean hand. So there, smooth, soft, moist, and that goes right into the bowl. Cover this and let it rise in a warm spot until approximately doubled in bulk. And my warm spot is right up here on top of my oven. So our dough has risen. Look at this. It's so pretty. And we're going to just uncover it. Now that's rise number one. Turn it out onto a floured surface, eliminate the air, and then put it back in the bowl and let it rise again. This is developing a really fine texture for the dough itself by having these multiple rises. This is the second of three rises. And you can see it's really nice, nice to handle. Beautiful. Right back in, right back up to the top of the stove. <laughs> and now I've started to preheat the oven just in preparation. I'm sort of can't wait to get this in the oven as a bread. But let that rise again to double in size. So another hour has passed. You're very patient students. Any questions? Do you feel like the third rise really adds to the overall texture? This is a very important rise because it's going to start taking its shape in the pan. So here's our dough. Be careful not to let it go too much. It'll turn sour. Is that sour taste from the yeast? Yes. It can start to ferment if you leave it too long. So now you can roll this dough into a rectangle and you're going to fold the rectangle into a kind of a business letter fold. This is our pan. This pan is a metal pan, bread pan, about four and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches long. And a very nice pan for making a good loaf of bread. Another reason to roll is to get some of these air bubbles out. Hear the air bubbles? You hear them squeaking. <laughs> That's a business letter fold. And you can turn the dough this way and roll it again. 
And if you find that the rolling is taking a little while, let the dough just sit for a, a minute or two to rest the gluten. So then you can roll this up tightly in a little roll. That'll be your bottom seam. Important to pinch. You can pinch with your fingers or you can pinch with the heel of your hand. Roll that over and you're going to tuck these ends under and place this in your pan. If you were to put the seam side up, would that ruin the crown that you Yeah, you might get a split in the top. Now it gets covered and let it rise until it comes up to just about the top of the pan. It'll start to assume a shape sort of like this before you put it in the oven. So look what happened. It is risen a third time. Very carefully take your plastic wrap off. Because of the butter in the dough, uh, it, this isn't sticking and it's very shiny and beautiful. I will put this right into a 425 degree oven. Mm, it's so gorgeous for 15 minutes. And when it's in the oven, just give it a good spritz with a water spray. Set your timer. 15 minutes. Reduce the oven temperature to 375 and set your timer for an additional 25 minutes. You're going to have the most beautiful loaf of bread. So it's so pretty. Want a piece? Absolutely. Want a taste? Yes, OK. The end is for me. <laughs> I don't want to give you the end anyway. Look at the great texture. This really makes great sandwiches. And use a nice, rich, yellow butter. So you all like butter? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Apricot or sour cherry? Sour cherry. Sour cherry for you, okay. Apricot? Yes, please. Here, that's for you. Oh, you have a new friend. I do, thank you. That's for Joseph. Thank you. Tiffany. And sour cherry or apricot? Apricot, please. Okay, there you are. Enjoy. What do you think? It's delicious. I love it. It's, it's very so light. Good. So I suggest that you try making this bread for your family. You'll never go back to the store going again. Have fun. So our beautiful Hokkaido bread can now be transformed with the addition of raisins soaked overnight in fresh orange juice. So just a half a cup of raisins soaked in half a cup of orange juice overnight. Strain them to get out the excess moisture. And these are incorporated right during the initial making of the dough. Don't wait for it to rise before you add the raisins. And I'm gonna just put them in right now. The dough is kneaded, everything's in the dough. And just add the raisins. So those just soak overnight so they overnight. get all the juice. They get all nice and plump. They change color too. Did you notice how yeah, they were they a different lighter. color? So for the filling itself, it's one cup of dark brown sugar, six tablespoons of room temperature butter. This can just be right into the sugar. If you didn't have brown sugar, could you use regular granulated sugar? You can, but it won't be the same. This makes a, a really rich filling. Cut the butter right into the brown sugar and some cinnamon four teaspoons of cinnamon. Could you add any other spices in there to make any more flavor? Maybe some nutmeg or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, if you want to, but it's, but the cinnamon is such a nice clean taste and I don't want to muddy it up with other flavors. With the brown sugar, it's nice. So just mix this all until it's completely incorporated. So the dough is ready to turn out of the bowl. And this will rise one time, you'll knock it down and it'll rise the second time. Then you'll form your loaves with the cinnamon filling. It's real pretty. A little tiny bit of bench flour to keep it from sticking. Fold it in on itself. This is kind of a kneading. All the folds on the bottom, roll it over, put it in your buttered bowl and cover with plastic wrap. Let rise until doubled in bulk. So now this is doubled in bulk. Just turn it out onto the counter. Use a little bit of flour on the bench and fold this in. Basically, you're deflating the dough. So there, that's ready to go right back into a warm spot till doubled and bubbled again. Okay, so here's our raisin dough. It's already risen the second time. And now it's time to form two loaves. Remember, this makes two loaves of beautiful raisin bread. Use a little bit of bench flour 
not a lot. We don't want it to get tough. And you can just put this into a seven inch square, fold this into thirds, pinch the seams, and cut that square in half. And now put this off to the side and to prevent it from drying out, just invert the bowl right over it. It's a nice little technique. Could I you add that. nuts and other things to this too? Oh yes, it's nice with um, softened brie yeah, cheese, delicious. Brie. And so now seven by 13 inch. So is it the same thing with this? If it's hard to roll, would you let it rest a little bit? Yes, absolutely. Would you ever soak the raisins in a different juice? Well, you can put in cognac. <laughs> I like it in cognac or in rum. It's very delicious in rum too. It's the bread that's versatile, so you can experiment. So now spread your filling, half of your filling on the dough. It's very dense. I think it's best to use a spatula, little offset spatulas. Great to have a supply of these in your kitchen drawer. What other types of fillings would you put in this? Well, this is a cinnamon swirl. I mean, you could do probably an apricot swirl, poppy seed, but not with the raisins. The raisins, are, I think it's really tasty with the cinnamon and the brown sugar. Spread almost to the edges. So there. So now roll this up. This is a tight roll. And then we're gonna cut this roll, you'll see, in half. I'm pinching the seam, keeping it under. And now just cut it lengthwise. So pretty. Isn't that pretty? So then you're going to put this in an X and then you're going to weave this like this. So what's going to be exposed is the cut side, the dark. And tuck that under and pop it into your pan. And then you see, so pretty. And then this gets covered for the last rising and do the same thing with the other piece of bread. For a second option, simpler, it's just basically creating a roll with the filling. And so you'll have a spiral bread. It'll look like a spiral when you cut it. Do you think you could also just slice this into like cinnamon rolls? Oh, you could, yes. Put them in uh, muffin tins. Mm, you're all about variations, you guys. That's <laughs> great. And pop that into your pan. So these will rise above the pan by, oh, two or three inches. And uh, it's gonna take almost an hour. Warm spot, out of direct sunlight, just let it rise. So now when they've gotten to be this risen, look how pretty, get them right into a preheated 425 degree oven. I put a cookie sheet underneath my bread with some parchment paper just to avoid a little bit of a mess and it's easier cleanup. So get that right into the oven, set your timer for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we'll reduce the heat to 375 and it'll be another 25 minutes or so. So do you start out on a higher temperature to give it that rise yes. first? Yes, yes, that's a nice boost. So when these come out of the oven, cool them on a rack and just brush with a little bit of melted butter. We're using an unsalted butter for this. It gives a nice gloss to the crust and keeps the crust a little bit moist and soft. Do you have to wait for the bread to fully cool before you cut it? No, warm. If you try to do this really, really hot, it'll just kind of fall apart. And who wants to see what they look like inside? Me, please. <laughs> I use a very good serrated knife. This is a great bread knife. Instead of jagged points, it's little round, half rounds. It slices through bread very nicely and has lots of flavor, lots of raisins. Much better than store-bought. I think so. And you get a great sense of self-satisfaction when you make something like this for your family. They think you're a hero. Look at that. Now that is beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. And now let's see what this one looks like. The swirl on that one's really Very beautiful. Very pretty. Fantastic variations on a theme. Hokkaido bread turned into cinnamon bread. What a good idea. Enjoy. So now we have a third variation on this Hokkaido bread, which are uh, spicy cheddar rolls. 
so delectable, just melt in your mouth. And they're wonderful to serve with a dinner and also with a wonderful salad for lunch. You need one cup of jalapeno peppers cut into a very small dice. And we're going to saute these jalapenos right in two tablespoons of butter. Now, if you're at all allergic to jalapenos, I advise you to wear rubber gloves when you're cutting them up. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt with the peppers. Remove the seeds too before you chop them. Why would you need to remove the seeds? Well, they're very hot. It takes away a lot of the heat. You want the flavor of the jalapenos. And just cook them until they're soft. They're going to be cooled and added right to this dough. This is a one batch of the Hokkaido or Japanese sandwich bread. So I think they look done. Just so they just start to exude a little bit of their moisture. They smell so good. Yeah, better than raw. So just let them cool a little bit. Do you know a fast way to cool things? No. I've learned this with the grandchildren because little kids just don't like real hot food. So my daughter has these little fans <laughs> right on the food like that. In a few seconds, it'll be cool. It's a very good method of cooling food if you don't have a cold outdoors to put it in or something. And these have rubber blades so you can stick your hands right in them. You don't get cut. And what would happen if you added the jalapenos hot? Uh, you add the hot jalapenos, you just might destroy some of that texture. And you can also take them out of the hot pan and they'll cool even faster. Do you enjoy cooking in copper? I love cooking in copper. I love the way the heat is conducted. It's really wonderful. After every use, just use a little bit of copper polish and polish it up. That way it's always looking bright. So this dough has just been finished, and now we can add our jalapeno peppers to it. So it will rise again, and then we will form the rolls, and it will rise a third time. Which variation is your favorite out of the three? Oh, they're all my favorites. I wouldn't be showing them if they weren't. They're all different. One for sandwiches, one for breakfast, and one for dinner. It's just the ability to utilize one dough so nicely. Okay, so this gets formed into a ball and put into a buttered bowl to rise. Besides white bread, what are some of your favorite breads to make? I like the one pot bread. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful way to make bread and gets the whole family involved in bread making. So see a generous amount of jalapeno in this dough. It's so pretty. It is pretty and tasty. And even with the butter and the jalapenos, it's beautifully shaped and smooth and good. Get that right into the bowl, cover and let rise. It's gonna take anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour or so. And then let that rise again to double in size. So now 12 jumbo muffin tins, buttered generously and just use softened butter, room temperature with a brush. I find this is the fastest way to butter these indented pans. So there, that's done. Now, here's the dough that's risen twice, and we're gonna form it into the individual rolls. So put some bench flour and just eliminate the air bubbles. How would you know if you overproofed your dough? It'll be running over the edges of the bowl. It'll be full of bubbles. It'll be sour, warm. You can halt the rising by putting it in the refrigerator. Don't forget that. Use your refrigerator if you have to. Do you think it would smell? How long are you going to leave it for a week? <laughs> <laughs> this is all a matter of hours. So we just want to square about seven by seven. Turn this into a business letter. How about a love letter? <laughs> now we're going to cut this in half. And we have two cups of grated cheddar. Now remember my little secret about keeping the dough nice and fresh. Just invert the bowl right over it there. So now this half of the dough, we want to roll into seven by 13. Now, if you can tell, we've tried to keep all the measurements for these three different recipes kind of similar. It's always seven by seven or seven by 13, just so that you can practice on this one recipe. And then once you become comfortable with this, you'll be more comfortable with a whole lot of other bread recipes. And yet this is so, Fantastic a recipe. No one will ever think it's your first bread if it is going to be your first bread. A nice rectangle. 
spread half the butter. We have four tablespoons of butter here, two tablespoons just spread very lightly over the entire surface of this seven by 13. Don't use melted butter. It ends differently if it's melted. You just want it soft. It's the same thing with madeleine pans. I find that if I use soft butter, madeleines will come out much easier than if I use melted butter. Also, flour doesn't get all sticky that you dust the pans with if you use room temperature butter. There, so that's done. Now, one cup of the cheese. Finely grated cheddar. And we're using an Irish cheddar, which is very delicious. Is that um, a sharp cheddar that you're using? This is a sharp aged cheddar, white cheddar. I like the white cheddar with the green jalapenos. So now we want six strips. So I start with half and then the half gets cut into three thirds. And the same with this side. And stack these on top of one another. Cheese side up. Yummy, right? Now it's hard to believe that this makes six rolls, but it does. So now cut these into thirds, and you just put these cut side up in the pan. This may be something that you get addicted to. <laughs> you know what else? It's great in summertime served with a barbecue. Yeah. You know, if you're doing ribs, this is a great, great bread to serve with your ribs. And you can make these, freeze them, warm them. You can do that ahead of time too. See? After these rise yes. and bake up, are they gonna fan out? They are, yeah. So now just cover these and wait until they rise to about the edge of the muffin tins. That's gonna take around 60 minutes. And then bake until they are wondrous jalapeno cheddar rolls. So, this is what they look like. They're right at the top of the muffin tins. They look so great. Get them into a 425 degree oven. Set your timer for 15 minutes and they're done. So here's how you transform one bread dough into three spectacular results. This wonderful Japanese sandwich bread can really be transformed easily and deliciously. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time on Martha Bakes. And you wanna see what's inside? Look how this breaks into little leaves. Very fantastic. Like a taste, mm -hmm. Yes, please. Sweet. Thanks very much for coming. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. Yeah. So good. <laughs>Whisk together one egg white and one tablespoon of water. Use tweezers to hold a petal. Using a food safe paintbrush, coat both sides of the rose petals with egg white mixture. Sprinkle with super fine sugar to coat completely. Place the petals on a wire rack and let dry about eight hours. The petals may be made in advance and stored at room temperature in single layers in an airtight container.